Hello, my name is Jamie and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Unlike any other YouTube channel that showcases Pokemon Go PvP content, mine exclusively showcases Shadow Pokemon. So, if you're into that type of content, I'd appreciate if you could like and subscribe. So, let's get into today's video. Today's video, we are going to be showcasing Shadow Articuno. In the early seasons, Articuno was an absolute top tier pick. It was very dominant because it had such positive matchups against things like Giratina and Togekiss. However, since Talonflame and Walrein are now in the meta, Articuno is very difficult to use and very uncommonly seen. However, I still believe it can have some play, so we tested it out today. We are teaming up with two really solid options, the GOAT, the one and only Shadow Swampert, and Drapion. Drapion, in my opinion, is one of the best save switch in the Open Ultra League, and I think this team has good synergy. Obviously, Swampert doesn't want to see Grass, Articuno and Drapion both cover Grass. Drapion's only weak to ground. Swampert and Articuno both hit ground for super effective. So you can already see that this team of three does make sense. And without any further ado, let's get into the battles. And in game one, we pick up a lead against XL Scrafty. I imagine the opponent is going to bait with power-up punches, which is super annoying. However, we snuck a mud shot, so we are going to get to back-to-back -back Hydro Cannon. So we will get early shield advantage. First Hydro Cannon, they allow to go through. Second Hydro Cannon will draw the shield or knock out. The opponent chooses the shield, so at this stage, I'm more than willing to shield up this. Even if it's a power-up punch, I know that we'll win the one shield or get shields down. So we go for this next Hydro Cannon. What does the opponent want to do? They shield up and now make a switch into our Akuno. The opponent has got enough energy for the foul play. I do not want to take a double boosted foul play or triple boosted, I believe, actually. So I do shield it up, and they come in with a Gramble. This isn't ideal. Icy Wind does not KO, and you can see these charms, even when they are debuffed, are really chunking me. So I decide to throw my energy just to get rid of it, as I don't want to have to take a move on Drapion. So they come back in with Scrafty. At this stage now, we can bring in Drapion. We can tank any move. It's just a pop. And we will now commit to the farm down. So in comes Talonflame. I'm almost at the back-to-back. -back. I try and throw a really strange time to confuse the opponent. Crunch does land. The opponent fires another incinerate. So the over farm there did confuse him because this second crunch is going to knock out and we're off to a 1-0 start. Moving on into the next battle. We pick up the mirror match. The mirror match is really annoying. One earthquake does knock out. However, this is just a hydro cannon. We sneak a mud shot. The opponent looks like they're no bubbled, expecting a shield, but guess what, motherfucker? I ain't shielding shit. They switch into the Walrus. Walrus does beat our entire team, so I land an Earthquake, and look at that. We have yet more Go Battle lag. Season 11, apparently you're fixing it in Atlantic. Hurry the fuck up, because your game's still trash. We correctly shield up an Earthquake, and we get to this crunch. If they don't shield, it will knock out. So we do manage to take out the Walrus. What are they going to come back in with? Back up comes the Swamper, and yet more fucking lag. Holy crap. Drapion has missed around four or five fast moves in this battle already. However, we do draw a shield from the Swampert and we get a defense drop. They are going to have to Earthquake us to take us out, which they do. With the defense drop, we're going to come in with Swampert, fire this Hydro Cannon immediately. If the opponent doesn't shield, this should knock out with the defense drop, which it does. And in the back is a Talonflame. So this should be pretty much good game. I'm going to try and get the shields down with Swampert. They actually let the first one go through as they know they will survive. I'm going to fire this second one and make a dip into our Akuno. So I bank a little bit of energy. We do sneak an eye shot. I imagine that should knock out. They fire the flame charge. It actually doesn't knock out. We sneak another in, uh, eye shot through. Do we survive the flame charge? Well, yes, we do. And that is a good game. Moving on into the next battle, we see the Kentucky Fried Chicken Bird of Death in the lead. They attempt to catch a Hydro Cannon onto Cresselia. We are going to soften it up with a Hydro Cannon and look to try and catch the Grass Knot onto our Akuno. The opponent doesn't throw, they build to 8, so they perhaps aren't on Grass Knot. They could hit me with a Future Sight, which they do. It does do big damage. We are just going to soften this up with an Icy Wind, lower the attack and look to come in with Drapion and commit to the farm down. If the opponent baits me here, it will not knock out. They correctly go for another Future Sight and manage to Psycho Cut down. As they have a Talonflame in the lead, I'm more than happy to completely sack the Ice Queen and come in with Drapion and commit to the Poison Sting down. Moonblast does hit for neutral and it is debuffed. They actually go for a Future Sight. That definitely isn't the play. Although Poison takes super effective from Psychic. Dark double resist, so that was single resisted. So perhaps you should have went for Moonblast. We land the Crunch. A really strange thing happens. What the fuck was that? They fire off a charge move. 
and a fucking fast move at the same time. Niantic, this is bullshit. But either way, we draw a shield with the crunch. We outpace to the second crunch. If the opponent shields this up, we're going to look to dip into Swampert. The opponent fires immediately, so I know this is going to be a flame charge. We tank it, we fire a Hydro Cannon. Hydro Cannon is going to KO what is hiding in the back. In the back is a Trevident. Fuck my life, this is going to be dicey. Swampert doesn't really give a fuck about typing, so you can see that three Hydro Cannons will be enough to knock out. We still have one shield as well. We get the second Hydro Cannon, they're now getting super low. Does the opponent commit to the farm down? No, they do not. They dump some energy, so I am counting fast moves. If they go for a Shadow Ball, I would shield. However, we're flexing. This is just a seed bomb. We tank that. Do we make the crunch yes we do if you're wondering why i'm flexing because this game currently is running like shit we're going to save a shield for the world championships because we're going to need all the help we can get moving on into the next battle we pick up a lead against amphrost this is super positive the opponent is staying in and firing thunder punches i've got no idea why you're staying in i imagine they're just going to sack the amphrost so i go straight for the earthquake and the opponent actually puts up a shield I'm now going to fire off this Hydro Cannon with the additional mud shots. This should put his super low. And the opponent has actually double shielded. Fucking hell, they must be weak to Swampert in the back. They fire off yet another Thunder Punch. At this stage now, I am going to commit a shield just to get rid of the Ampharos because my back two Pokemon aren't really going to appreciate some of the damage that they can output. We bank a bucket load of energy. They come in with the Walrus. We come in with Drapion. We land the crunch, it gets the Walrus quite low, they're over farming heavily, they allow us to get to yet another crunch, this is going to put it super low, and at this stage now I'm just going to sack the Drapion. I've got no intention of shielding, if the Earthquake it will knock out, it's just an Icicle Sphere which we survive. The opponent still has a bucket load of energy, and strangely enough they go for an Earthquake, they probably could have Icicle Speared, but we're not too fussed about that. We now come in with our Akuno, and we're going to look to Resisted Ice Shard down. We tank the Icicle Sphere, it does hit quite hard, but we leave with a load of energy. I now switch out into Swampert. Imagine they'll come in with Ampharos, I fire off a Hydro Cannon, it's actually a Talonflame. They tank the move on Talonflame, it does huge damage. They now snipe with Ampharos, we take out Ampharos with the Icy Wind, and we should be able to Ice Shard down the Talonflames. We are gonna shield up any move. They go for the Hail Mary Brave Bird, and Articuno proves it is still the queen of the Flyers. Moving on into the next one. We see Cresselia in the lead. We once again attempt to catch the Grass Knot onto Articuno. We are unsuccessful and they come in with an Ampharos. Holy crap, that is two Ampharos in two games. I understand Walrein is now in the meta, so Ampharos does make sense. But it really isn't what my save switch of Articuno wants to see. So they fire off a Thunder Punch with the debuff. It doesn't care and we actually get to another Icy Wind. So despite unfavourable typings, Articuno has got shield advantage from this Ampharos and it is deep in the red. We are going to use Swampert as a damage sponge. Believe it or not, this isn't something that you usually use as a damage sponge. They fire the Dragon Pulse, they aren't on Focus Blast, this is just a Thunder Punch. We tank that as well and we leave with a bucket load of energy. So I expect the Cresselia to come back in. I am going to have to shield this up. Are they on Grass Knot? Yes they are. I've got an absolute boatload of energy, so I am going to unload a Hydro Cannon and then look to make a switch into my Drapion. So in comes Drapion. The opponent is going to fire a move. We aren't going to shield shit. Moonblast does do a decent amount of damage. And in the back, they have a Drapion of their own. So another man of culture. We love Drapion on this channel. However, it isn't a shadow. So we get the defense drop and we're in a pretty good spot. We get to one more crunch. This crunch will get it super low. It looks like the opponent is going to have to dump energy as soon as they get it. They do not choose to dump energy. So Drapion will take out the non-shadow Drapion. Cresselia is looking to Psychic Cut us down. Yeah, that's not happening. Drapion will draw the shield with this crunch. I can now switch out Earthquake Cresselia and take the game. The Cresselia is at a move. However, they would lose CMP and they can't hold two moves. So this Earthquake is going to be enough to take this game. And that is a perfect 5-0 with Shadow Articuno in the Open Ultra League. So despite things like Talonflame, Galarian Stunfisk and Walrein being in the meta, Articuno is still queen of the flyers in my humble opinion. We did see a couple of Talonflame, we even saw a couple of Ampharos and in one of them battles you saw just how good Articuno can be. Despite unfavourable typing in the mid game, we got the Ampharos super low and got shield advantage. So I'd highly recommend Dust off your old 
pre-season and season one Art Akuno and have some fun. So I'd just like to say thanks for watching and I will see you all in the next one.